Hello everyone, it's Seth, probably better known as Saffron Olive, and it's time for the white section of our Eldric Moon set review. So I'm joined again today, like I have been all week, by Chaz. How you doing today, Chaz? I'm doing great. White is awesome in this set. I'm really excited, and thanks for having me back. Uh, glad you could uh, come back. So let's dive right into it. First up, we have a card that some people have called the Collected Company for Planeswalkers, Deploy the Gatewatch. It's it's a good comparison. I don't know if it's as good, but it's a it's quite a good comparison. I really like the take on this card. I like that they're branching out and making these different kind of cards like similar to Collected Company and treating Planeswalker like all the other cards in Magic. We we got Call of the Gatewatch in a couple of sets ago that tutors for Planeswalkers. Now we have a Collected Company S card. So I like the direction of where they're going with that. And this could be very powerful. It It's kind of unfortunate that you don't have Ugin, but maybe that's a good thing because just playing six for an Ugin seems really good to me. But if there's a way to manipulate the deck or build around something like Soren or Chandra where you can get both of those cards that's obviously living the dream yeah so this card honestly I don't think it's very good in constructed that's uh I like it and I think it's cool and I think you can build a really sweet fun uh, somewhat casual super friends list but I'm just not sure that a real competitive standard deck can play enough Planeswalkers to make this work. I think for this to be good, you either got to be able to hit one Karn or Ugin level Planeswalker, or if you're going to be hitting cheaper Planeswalkers, Liliana, Gideons, to really get your mana's worth out of it, you're going to want to make sure you're hitting two. Paying six to get a single Gideon just isn't all that exciting to me so I'm gonna lean towards this being a big casual hit that people build these crazy super friends decks with uh, but probably doesn't do anything in constructed yeah I think that's a really good evaluation that's that's kind of where I've landed on this card as well but there is a white mythic that is probably gonna do a couple things in constructed uh, that is Gisela the Broken Blade. So the last one we said was the Planeswalker Collected Company. People are calling this one the Little Bane Slayer Angel. The Little Bane Slayer Angel. It, it, is, it is indeed. It has all the stats. Flying First Strike, strike Life Link. Deals with a lot of other flying creatures. Doesn't quite deal with Mindrack Demon, but I don't know if that's going to be a thing to worry about. It stops opposing Avacyns from blocking or, or anything like that. And I just think this is overall one of the better, if not the best, mythic in the set in terms of just raw power. And I I just don't see a standard without this card in it. Uh, green and white in particular, especially white, has just become so powerful. And this is definitely going to be a tool in those decks to just play as a top end in something like a humans list or something like that, where you can just play it, why not? Or you can build a more of like a mid-range list where this is just another stop along your curve and it's just so, so valuable at that slot that why not? Why not play it? And the upside is it could meld sometimes. <laughs> yeah, the the curve in white is really absurd. You have uh, a bunch of random one drops, but then you got Knight of the White Orchid into the new Thalia, into Gisela, into Avacyn, into some random top end stuff. Like, I think you can just jam all those cards in the deck, back it up with Declaration and Stone, and you have a legitimately powerful deck just playing, like, white good stuff. Like, that's how powerful yeah. the white cards is, are in this standard format, and Gisela just adds to that list. It's uh, almost sad to me that white was already clearly the best color in standard, and as you said, they probably got the best mythic in Eldrick Moon as well, just to throw into their already overpowered uh, color, so... Yeah, I just, I love the interactions, even with Bruna. We're, we'll talk about the meld aspect in a second. But it's just it's just really powerful on its own. Much more powerful, just, you don't even really have to meld. I think the meld is just gravy, and I think the interaction between, like, Gisela and maybe using that as a piece to, 
like you said, a white good stuff list with maybe built around a card like Eldritch Evolution into something like Thalia's Lancers to grab like a Bruna, and then you can get your Gisela back. So there's a way that you can get up that curve to take advantage of, of just those interactions right there and meld. Well, Chaz mentioned Meld, so the card that Gisela melds with is Bruna the Fading Light. So when we talked about the red cards, we said that both halves of the Meld, for it to really be good and constructed, you want both halves, the front halves, to be playable on their own. I'm not sold on Bruna being playable on her own. I know you might disagree with me, Chaz. What do you think? Well, I... I th- I think it is pretty good on its own. It's It's got good stats for... I mean, I think the converted mana cost is obviously something that's concerning when you look at it at its face value. But with cards like Eldritch Evolution, trying to go up the chain, 7 isn't too bad in standard if you're building like a higher-end list that can sometimes take advantage of Bruna. Maybe you play it as a one-of... There's interactions with cards like Ever After, where you can just grab Bruna and Gisela from your graveyard to utilize that. I think both sisters being back is awesome. Uh, The story that they just kind of turn into this crazy monster is awesome. And I I think Bruna's not bad. It's it's obviously not ideal to be 7 mana, but I think there are a couple interesting ways around that. Well, and it is good, I guess, that Bruna, all by yourself, when you cast it, you can reanimate the Gisela, and then on your end keep, you can yep. uh, meld, and the payoff for melding is Priscilla. Oh, that name. I do not know about that name. The voice. It's DBZ. <laughs> the, the voice of nightmares. So, while I don't like the name, the payoff is obviously right. pretty massive. 9 10 flying first strike, vigilance, lifelink. Can't, your opponents can't cast spells with converted mana cost, three or less, which means no ruinous path, no declaration in stone, no, I don't know, ultimate price, whatever. Most removal that is going to target it is locked out of the game, along with a lot of creatures. So, uh, how good is Brasella, Jazz? I, I don't. It's hard to say how which one will end up the best between this and the Garrison meld that we talked about in a few videos ago. But if this meld does go off, I, I don't see... I, the game is going to end fairly quickly. <laughs> That's one thing. And there's just not many ways to deal with it, like you alluded to. No Stasis Snare, no Ruinous Path, nothing, no Declaration Stone. No Reflector Mage, which is a pretty big one. So it basically is negating no pun intended, a lot of the stuff that can deal with it in standard. I think we're really just down to trying to collect a company of Reflector Mage, and that's really it when it comes to that, and a board wipe. But, I mean, who plays those? Yeah, and and Languish doesn't even do it. You need a real board wipe. And you got to do all that in one, two turns? Well, speaking of cards your opponents can't cast when you have a Brucella, our next card is Collected Effort. Collective Effort. This is the white Escalate card. So, first we had Discard a card for Escalate, then we had Pay Mana, now we have Tap and Untap Creature you control. Oh, What do you think of this Even one? easier, and you're, you're right, while you can't cast it when Gisela's out, you can certainly cast this all the other times. So... Uh, I even just choosing one of these for three is probably good enough, especially in a humans list when you when you have plus one plus one counters on all your stuff is like a late game push to to kill your opponent. I mean, just tapping creatures that already have summoning sickness or just aren't really doing much uh, on the battlefield something that you may not want to attack with. Ah. Uh, this is great. I, I love collective effort. It's it's really easy to escalate. All the modes are pretty good. You can you can deal with opposing stasis snares, silk wraps. You can deal with larger creatures than the humans are than your humans that are in play. This is kind of where I envision this being played. And you get the added benefit of buffing or anthemin antheming your team and setting up a the, a couple next turns where you can close out. Uh, a game. So it's just all around great. Yeah, this card reminds me quite a bit of Dramolka's Command. Sure. 
except in some ways it's even more powerful. A lot of the individual modes on the card are just powered up, where Dramoka's Command puts a counter on any creature. This does it to your entire team, while Dramoka's Command fights, so you need to have a creature out there. This just destroys a big creature straight up. So I think this card is going to see a lot of play in humans decks, in a lot of white decks, uh, possibly in the main deck, and definitely in the sideboard. Well, luckily, not every white card is good. Some of them are uh. just very strange. Like Providence, for example. Chaz, what is going really on strange. with this card? I, I don't know. I couldn't tell you, Seth. I'm <laughs> sorry. I... Maybe you can tell us after you build your against the odds for a uh, deck with this, but I think everyone has to make sure they realize that you don't gain 26 life, that your life total just becomes 26. So I don't, I don't know. I really don't know. For seven mana, it's going to be sitting in your hand, pretty much all game, even if you get to reveal it at the beginning of your at the beginning of the game when you draw it. And I don't know if that's good enough. I, I just, this, this card's so strange. I don't know how to evaluate this. I don't know if playing this is good enough because if you're drawing it and you don't even get the, the reveal part, it just seems awful. So, and, and gaining six life, essentially, just for playing a seven mana card, I don't know. So I, I will let the viewers in on a secret. When you analyze magic sets one of the most effective cop outs you can do with a janky card is say oh this is probably good in commander that's one of my favorites uh, and that doesn't even work with this card because I, you would actually so. lose 14 life if you reveal <laughs> this in your opening hand yes that is true that it is it is not that great <laughs> yeah so i just have no clue what you're gonna do with this card i guess you can uh, play it in a white deck in modern and it sided in against burn to start at 26 uh, but then you have Leyline of Sanctity already which is just like even better and you get to yeah. put it on the so I have no idea why anyone would ever play this card in any deck in any format maybe I'm completely misevaluating it but this card is weird and I don't think it is good I, I would love to be proved otherwise <laughs> <laughs> yes please <laughs> Send yeah. me send me your best Providence deck, Saffron Olive, MTGGoldfish.com. I'd love to see a deck that breaks this card. So, yeah. so if this, you this have one, hook me up. We'll uh, be at the Pro Tour and we're just <laughs> <laughs> face palming ourselves. Uh, uh, I doubt it, but. Yeah. All, right. All right. Up next, we have a human cleric, Sanctifier of Souls. Is this, I think, the white intro pack rare? Yes, it's the white intro pack rare. It's it's akin to like it reminds me of a card from the first Ravnica. I can't remember. It's like a spirit, spirit drover, or something, uh, something oh. like that. It, it's it's Twilight cool. Drover. It, yeah, th th there we go. It's cool. It does some cool stuff. I it's an intro pack rare. I think it can just be left at that. It's no Nibbles of Frost, <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, I, I don't have much to say about this one. I mean, it's it's fine. It does some stuff and some things. It's you can get it in an intro pack if you want it, but I I don't think it really has any applications in constructed. I guess. Oh, why can't I think of the name of it now? What's the one mana blue enchantment that reduces the activated ability cost on creatures? Oh, uh, uh, training grounds. Training grounds. You can yeah. uh, you can hook up the training grounds combo, so you can pay one white to make a bunch of spirits. Sure. So. Uh, <laughs> so you could go that direction, but yeah, this this card I don't think is uh, very playable. I, I like playable. your thinking, Seth. Always <laughs> thinking about uh, what we can do. I, I mean, for four mana, you look at this and you look at Gisela, and I think the uh, the choice is very obvious. Well, Gisela can't make spirit tokens, Jazz. So. No, no, it can't. You're right. Uh, all right. Well, we do have a couple more potentially cool white cards. One is yeah. another spirit, selfless spirit. What about this one, Jazz? Is this a potential part of that hypothetical spirit deck we've been talking about all set review? It could be. I don't... Maybe out of the the sideboard, if they need an effect like this, if it turns out you need to just straight out overpower your opponent in a combat, like if you're in a racing situation with another aggressive list, this is definitely something that can be devastating off the back of like a rattle chains especially with a flash 
uh, the, the flash claws on that. It could just stick around and just make your opponent make some awkward choices. Uh, we've seen this effect before in in previous sets, like uh, th there's that Loxodon from Alara Reborn that kind of was really good. It, it, it had its application, so it it could just be a tool in humans. Who knows? I don't. It, it's it could just go outside of a spirit list, and I think that it definitely has a couple applications like that. So it, it's it's solid. I don't know if it's game breaking, but it it has its uses. Yeah, I think you're actually right. I think I was going with the name and the creature type and talking too much about spirits. Maybe the best place for this card is a sideboard in a white humans list where you can bring it in. One of the cards that wrecks them pretty hard is like Kozilek's Return, also if there's a Radiant Flames or something. And this is a really good counter to that. There's also, uh, we're not going to talk about it because it's a, an uncommon, but there's also a 2-mana instant that prevents all damage from non-human sources, which does a similar thing if you're looking for an effect to save your your creatures from some sort of pyroclasm-esque effect. So I think it has applications there. Whether you just jam this in the main deck of a spirits deck, I'm not 100% sure. Not having flash on its own makes it a lot worse than some other things. And if you're just using it to counter one removal spell, you already have like rattle chains that kind of does the same thing by giving a creature hexproof. But I think there's applications for it, but I'm guessing it probably starts out in the sideboard. So... Next up, we got a couple more white cards. Sigarda's Aid, another really unique card. So yeah. what do you think of this one, Jazz? It's really unique. I've, I've never seen a card like this before, and it's, I can't even really compare it to another card. I guess if you need your enchantments to have flash, this is the card for you. And it's it plays really well with equipments and auras, so you kind of you get that synergy there. And I don't know where it goes right away, but maybe there's a deck that could potentially make use of this. Uh, with these cards, I guess you got to ask yourself, is this worth the price of a card? Obviously, casting auras and equipments with Flash is really cool and really fun, and I could imagine doing some neat things with it. But I think you need a deck where this is actually cheating on mana. Uh, yeah. For example, uh, there used to be a deck built around Quest for the Holy Relic in Augentum Armor, which is this yep. huge six mana, six equip equipment. Uh, so if you had something like this on the battlefield and you could cheat that six mana equip cost and immediately equip in Augentum Armor, that's actually pretty powerful. So I think that that's what you're going to be looking for with this card. The good news is it is absolutely as cheap as it gets. Uh, it's obviously as pushed as you can make this effect because yeah. it's only one mana. So if this effect is going to be constructed playable, this is a card to do it because it's only one mana. So the, the only question is, is there a deck that this effect is worth the price of a card? Because at one mana, any deck that wants it can play it. Right. The, the issue is, is that additional copies of this card kind of become redundant, and that is the huge downside of this. So like you said, it really has to be in a deck that it's worth the card or, or worth a card even at one mana. So, our last white card, and... But certainly not least. Actually, it's not even our last white card. The oh, wow. Well. I, I, just kidding. <laughs> but <laughs> we have Thalia Heretic Cathar. This card... Oh, my. Oh, why did they do this to us, Chaz? Why I, so many good white cards? I don't know. As if humans needed anything else. They got spells, they got some other cool stuff, and now they have the return of Thalia... Where isn't this card going to be good? I think is the better question than where it's going to be good. I, I think it's just a multi-format all-star, and it's it, it's getting a lot of hype, and rightly so. It's it's really great. Yeah, I mean, we probably don't got to go super in depth into it, but from everyone I've talked to, it seems good in standard. It seems like it can do some crazy things in modern, and Richard is a big fan of it in legacy as well. So. I expect this card to see a lot of play in a lot of places. It's good yep. against Collected Company. It's good in Collected Company. It's good against Fetchlands. It's not symmetrical, so it's not hurting your stuff. Right. Like, just yep. uh, 
everything about this card is about as good as it can be for uh, what it's doing. I mean, it's it's like Kismet, right? Isn't that the right. enchantment? And that's a two-mana enchantment with no body? And this is one additional mana, and you're getting a 3-2 first strike creature that locks Sylvan Advocate out of the game yep. and actually is relevant. So uh, this card is just so good. It curves with the original Thalia. It's, oh my god, this card is going to be miserable for anyone who enjoys playing Magic in every format because it just slows you down so much. It makes it difficult to block. Your lands are going to be off curve. So that's Thalia. Yeah, and it, it's just, if you didn't like playing against humans in standard before, you're certainly not going to like it now. <laughs> I literally, the only downside to this card is that it's legendary, and I literally think that's it. I, there's there's so much upside to this card. It's really great. Like you said, it it even curves with the original version of Thalia. It's it's not symmetrical, so it only affects your opponents. It is a great boon to those death and taxes style archetypes and other formats it's just all around great well our real last card is yes. another thalia card thalia's lancers this one not quite as good as thalia herself but kind of interesting another tutor effect what do you think of this one jazz so not only is thalia good thalia's lieutenant is good and i think thalia's lancers <laughs> is pretty good too so i thought <laughs> I think the winner of Shadows over Innistrad block 2.0 is Thalia. <laughs> Who would have thought? Uh, didn't think this would have been viable like at first glance, but I'm actually it's growing on me a lot. It's it's a legendary card, not just a creature. So in other formats outside of standard, that's obviously great in in sets like or in formats like EDH, Commander, or what have you. In standard, like I said, it's a great piece to a puzzle that you can grab like a Gisela or a Bruna at the top end of a curve. You can Eldritch Evolution into a Thalia's Lancer off of a three converted mana cost card or even use Gisela herself if you want to do something like that. Bruna gets Thalia's Lancers back, so there's even additional value out of that. I just think it's an all-around great card. and. Like I said, for EDH and Commander purposes, there's even more incentive to play this card. Yeah, I think it's definitely a Commander All-Star. There's a lot of legendary things you want to search up. And in Standard, I was thinking it probably wouldn't be very good, but hearing you talk about Eldric Evolution, it is pretty sweet that you can play this, get the Gisela, sack this to get the Bruna, and like have the Wombo combo of melding into Brucella <laughs> yeah. all right there, and you can get it back, and it's an enters the battlefield ability, so you can blink it if that's a thing you want to do in uh, Commander or in other formats, so uh, it's growing on me, and a 4-4 four, four first striker is pretty big, like, on the ground. Yep. There's a lot of stuff that doesn't get through a 4-4 four, four first striker, so maybe it has more potential in standard than I uh, first thought. Uh, well, that brings us to the end of the white cards of our Elder Moon set review. So, Chaz, like every other day, what's your pick for your favorite? Ah, uh, I think it has to be Gisela, just based on pure power. I'm going... With that, I'm sticking with my trend here. Gisela's just insane. Uh, yeah, I'm going to go with Thalia, actually. Yeah. I think Gisela is very good, choice. but I think Thalia likely has more applications sure. across formats. I think Gisela is probably better in standard, but I think that you're more likely to see Thalia showing up in older formats as well. So, But they're sure. both extremely powerful cards. It's definitely a 1A, 1B, and I, I don't think you could definitely interchange them. Thalia is insane, too. All right, so we have one more day to go in our Eldrick Moon set review. So we'll be back tomorrow, Chaz and I, to talk about the colorless cards of the set. So, Chaz, thanks for hanging out, and I will talk to you tomorrow. Always a pleasure. Thank you. I don't know how white got better, but it did. So <laughs> thanks for everyone for joining us, and I uh, can't wait to come back for the next one. And thanks to Wizards for printing more OP white cards. Yeah, it happens. <laughs> <laughs>